morning, Brooks. Uh, <laughs> I understand that there's snacks today, so I should probably be as brief as possible to make sure that everyone gets there and follow on classes on time. Uh, I took this opportunity today to talk to the school about Veterans Day uh, and what it means to me. I'm new here and I'm grateful to talk to you, to share some of my past experiences and a little bit about myself so that as a community we come together and we understand of what our experiences are together. This is a chance for me as a new faculty member to give insight about my background. And as I look out, I see a lot of students here and I'm, I'm not gonna ask any of the students to raise their hands, but probably 17 years old or older in the crowd there is a, a strong chance that one year ago, 17 years old and older, we would be talking this weekend, either at home or for deployed, of how we were going to spend this weekend, how we were gonna behave, how we were going to react, or how we were gonna deploy in the next couple weeks. So for freshmen and sophomores, as you look to the junior, uh, juniors and seniors, for guidance, know that their roles of responsibility could be in that role and responsibility uh, quickly coming. I'm part of this new school, as well as you would be part of my new unit. It would be my responsibility to let you know what the expectations would be for this upcoming weekend of Veterans Day, as well as the Marine Corps birthday, which is happening this weekend. I would talk to you about I would, I would expect that we all act and we all are responsible for our conduct of we're living and representing the people that came before us. It's not just us, it's the people that always come before us. And so I would ask the 17 and higher that that, that would be on you to hold, hold the line as we go forward. So a little, bit with that, that brief is going on everywhere around the world today, especially in the Marine Corps. As it, it is our birthday today, 247, go Marines. That is our birthday today that we'd be talking about the heritage and why the Marine Corps is so respected and so revered. I just wanna put something in perspective with the Marine Corps. We don't have chaplains in our unit, we don't have medics in our unit. We rely on them through other services. And I will say this for the purpose of the mindset is that they are so important to us as we sit here in chapel today for our spiritual and physical growth to be better. But with us, the service in the, the Marines is keep going forward, keep pushing forward if you keep pushing forward, just know that your friends behind you will be taken care of. It's not about you, it's about your friends behind you. Someone else will help them out, someone else will take care of them. Your sole job is just to keep pushing forward. I see that as a, a, a high task to take on Veterans Day, and I see that as a high task to say, but it's, it's a great mindset to have saying that I know if I do my job, someone else will help out. And if I don't do it, someone else will help me. And so that's really important. And that's somewhat of the charge that I'm gonna share with you a eulogy at the end of this, that it doesn't stop. You just keep moving forward with whatever task you have, whether you are the most skilled, athletic, talented, or gifted person, you just keep doing your part in whatever role that you have. So, a little history of Veterans Day. It came about after World War I. It was supposed to be, World War I was supposed to be the world that ended all world wars. It was the 11th hour of the 11th day to silence all wars. Didn't work out that way, unfortunately. We established Veterans Day after that to not only celebrate 
and memorize, uh, memorize the people that died before us, but celebrate the people that lived for us. And I want to anchor on that moment for a second, on that, that theory for a second, is we, mem we celebrate the people who came before us by living our best lives and doing what we hope they would have done, what they could have done, what they should have done, but unfortunately were cut short. Sometimes this day gets confused with Memorial Day, and that's really not a, a big deal. It's just a time to, to take a second away to remember veterans that have served before us. For me, it's important. Uh, for the last 20 years, I've served as an officer in the Marine Corps. My primary job was a Cobra pilot as a um, attack helicopter pilot. I will say my last day in service was just as exciting as any day it was in service because it was pushing it forward, doing a physical fitness test for a student here on Brooks that did exceptionally, exceptionally well. And that's the whole goal of serving in the military is you want to push the person behind you farther than you went before. As a Cobra pilot, several missions that we were tasked, to, uh, tasked with were uh, my two favorites were close air support, which if a unit was in sort of conflict, we would rush to, fly to as fast as possible in order to uh, tip the conflict in their favor. The other one was escort. And escort was combat escort and making sure that any patrol or convoy that was leaving the line knew that they had someone overhead watching out, looking for them, taking care of them. It was also medevac escort, making sure that everyone was taken care of and they would get to the appropriate place on time at any time of night, at any time of the day. I'd meet servicemen and service women on the radio. I never knew what they looked like. They never knew what I looked like. Radios are sometimes garbled. Voices are sometimes skewed. If I get really excited, you'll hear my Boston accent come out. I would hear Southern accents come out when they're excited. But for the most part, you don't know who is on the end of that radio. You just know you're there to support them. And I think that's one of the greatest things we have about serving in the military and Veterans Day is everyone comes from all different walks of life and they all just want to support. We all just want to make sure that everyone is taken care of. Basically, check in with what you have, what you can do, and what you hope to do. I also served as a joint terminal air controller. That's me with a uh, Georgian from the country of Georgia, not the state of Georgia. And all I did was provide air support for them. Different language, different country, same team, different uniform. Calling in airstrikes, artillery, as well as medevacs for Georgian soldiers. So for Veterans Day and, Memor and Veterans Day, I have a couple memories. The first one was being on the USS Boxer, where on this day, uh, a couple years ago, I was told with about 2,200 other Marines that we were going into Iraq. We were in the middle of the Persian Gulf. We were told, guess what, Marines, you're going to Iraq. This is what you trained for. This is what you're ready for. Go back to your different units and get ready to go. I was one of eight Cobra pilots that was attached to a unit, and all we did was go back and figure out the best way we could support. There was no what's going to happen next. There was no talk about some of us not coming home. It was, hey, we are going, let's go. The second time was just prior to leaving for Afghanistan, where I had a small team, and as I said at the beginning of the speech, 17 to 21-year-olds, two-thirds of my team were 17 to 21-year-olds that we were going to Afghanistan, and everything that we had heard, it was going to be a tough fight. I told every single person on our team as we got together to go back to their high schools, to go back to their families and to go back to 
anywhere they had a lesson where they learned to be strong. We would be challenged mentally, physically, and morally every day for the next eight months of our lives. And they took that advice. I took that advice for myself. I went back and I talked to my teachers and coaches. I went back and talked to the high school. I don't want any grumblings here in the Brooks Chapel, but I went back to governors and went back and talked to my teachers and said, hey, what do you, what do you think? Like, where was there a spot where I showed real integrity? And I, I asked because I needed that foundation, which, and it doesn't need to be deploying or doing anything like that, but for seniors and juniors, when you go off to college and you go off and do new things, I hope that Brooks is a foundation for you for when you come, you can come back and you can ask, really ask, hey, is this, is this my bedrock? Is this where when I'm challenged in every aspect of my life, you can come back and ask those questions and people will still be here. The teachers, the coaches, the, the faculty members, they will be your life lessons here. Your teammates, your class, it'll all be here because there's, there will be, and just as that deployment served, there will be a time where you are tested. So, as we talked about that, we talked about getting stronger. We talked about how going back would help us out and not just our individual. And this is why I see Brooks as such a great opportunity. It's not just you as the individual, it's you as a community. Because it's not just your stories that are gonna help you. It's not just your experiences that are gonna help you. When you come across a point in your life, you're gonna reach out and ask another person to the right or left of you and say, what did you do during this time in your life? And you're gonna say, hey, I had this great teacher that gave me this advice. I had this great dorm parent, parent that gave me this advice. Oh, can we stop the video for one second? So as, as we transition to uh, the video, beginning of the video, this is why I really enjoy this video for Veterans Day. This video is a recap of uh, a eulogy that was given on Iwo Jima in 1944 uh, of the Marine Corps, one of the bloodiest battles in the Marine Corps. The rabbi who gave uh, the eulogy was a pacifist and wanted to just see how he could help out in any way he could. And his words are now pretty much one of the things that we live by in on Memorial Day and on Veterans Day. And I think they're really powerful. And if you can listen to the very end of the word, if we can start from, I'll, I'll let you know, start from the beginning. If we can, uh, if you just really listen to the words as it goes through, this is 1940s of someone living up to and giving an example of what exactly is in your charge to be a veteran. It's not just going through, it's the following, uh, following message and following actually task to go through. So if you can uh, start with that. The battle for Iwo Jima, the for was, Iwo supposed Jima was supposed to be just another no, step no on the road to Japan. The battle for Iwo Jima was supposed to be just another step on the road to Japan. The island had been bombarded by air and sea for nine months. The invading Marines from both the 4th and 5th Divisions were told it was going to be a cakewalk. Back on ship in 72 hours, they were told. Not even close. What started out in February 19th, 1945, ended up 36 days later on March 26th, 1945, and this would become the bloodiest battle in the United States Marine Corps history. Over 18,000 Japanese soldiers would be killed. The Navy would suffer over 6,000 killed and 26,000 casualties combined with the Marine Corps. At the end of the campaign, three American cemeteries were planned, one for each division that served on the island. The 5th Division Protestant, Chaplain Warren Cuthrell, selected Jewish rabbi Roland Gittleson to prepare a non-denominational memorial ceremony for those who had passed. He wrote these words 
and they are now forever known in the Marine Corps as the purest democracy. This is perhaps the grimmest and surely the holiest day we have faced since D-Day. Here before us lie the bodies of comrades and friends, men who until yesterday we laughed with, we joked with, we trained with them, men who were on the same ships with us, over the sides they went over with us. We prepared to hit the beaches of this island together. Men who fought with us, we feared with them, and somewhere in this plot of ground lie the individual who could, discover, who could have discovered the cure for cancer. Under one of the Christian crosses, or beneath a Jewish star, there may now rest an individual who is destined to be a great prophet. To find the way, perhaps, for all to live in plenty without poverty. Now, here they lie silently in the sacred soil we gathered and we consecrate in their memory. It's not easy to do so. Some of us have buried our closest friends. We have seen these men killed before us with our very eyes. Any one of us might have died in their places. Indeed, some of us alive and are breathing now at this very moment because men, some of these men that lie beneath here had the courage and strength to give their lives for ours. To speak of these men is not an easy term. Of them too can it be said with other truth, the world will little note what we say here, but it can never forget what these men did here. No, our poor power of speech can add nothing to what these men and other dead men of the division who we are here have already done. All we can do is hope to follow their example to show that same selfless in courage and peace as they did in war. To swear by the grace of God and the stubborn strength and the power of human will that their sons and ours will never suffer these pains again. These men did their jobs well. If that freedom is once again lost, as it was lost after the last war, the unforgivable blame will be ours. So to us, it will be on us as the living that we are here dedicated and consecrated. We dedicated our future lives first to live together in peace the way they fought and are now buried in war. Here lie men who loved America because their ancestors generations ago helped in the founding and other men who loved her with equal passion because they themselves or their own fathers escaped from oppression or traveled to their beloved shores. Here lie officers and men, black and white, rich and poor, here lie Catholics, Catholics, Protestants, and Jews. They lie together. Here, there are no quotas for how many are admitted or allowed. Among these men, there is no discrimination. There's no prejudice. There's no hatred. Theirs is the highest form of democracy. Among us, among us the living, who fails to understand this, will thereby betray those who lie here. Whoever of us ever lifts a hand in hate against those or thinks of himself superior to those who happen to be on, in the minority makes this ceremony another bloody sacrifice and an empty, hollow mockery. To this is our sacred, sol solid duty. We, the living, now dedicate ourselves to the right Catholics, Protestants, and Jews of all races to enjoy the democracy for which they have paid the price. We memorialize those who have now ceased living. We live now for them. Too much blood has gone into the soil to let it lie barren. Too much pain and heartache has fertilized the soil for which we stand. We solemn, solemnly swear that this will not go in vain. Out of this, the suffering and sorrow of those who mourn, this we promise will come a new freedom for all humanity, for all everywhere. Let us say amen. Brooks, as we go in to Veterans Day, all I have to say is thank you for letting me speak with you. I appreciate the moment that I had here. I know for myself and other veterans that the fact that there was just a moment where people took a step out of their day, whether I was forward deployed or anywhere, made us know that we were doing the right thing. Go Brooks.